You get out of bed this instant. And turn it on. Glenn, Angel, and the Flying Dutchman. The Big Show on Kiss 92. Good morning, Singapore, and welcome to the biggest and best breakfast show here in Singapore. It's The Big Show with Glenn, Angel, and the Flying Dutchman, and we are so honoured indeed to have someone we miss so much. We haven't seen him in so quite long. a number of years now. He's the one, the only Michelin star chef, superstar, Mr. Daniel Bullard. Woohoo! Morning, Thank Daniel. You. I'm not sure about you, but I saw him last night. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations once again on the opening of Maison Boulou. Thank you. Thank you very much. It, it was, was very was exciting. Very yeah. yeah, absolutely. It was and good. it officially opens today, today ladies yeah. and gentlemen, boys and girls yeah. at Marina Bay Sands. I already had some friends yesterday asking me, tell me how it was because I have reservations for next week. So okay. I'm like, oh, okay. Ooh, well, exciting. Tune into the show to find it. out. Well, um, yesterday, we passed you all kind of little taste of dishes that we have on the menu so tell us a little bit more about the menu the teasers. <laughs> tell, tell us tell us a little bit more about the menu what can people expect uh well uh mm. the menu is uh, composed of many dishes that uh represent uh uh some of the uh classic uh dish we we like to do we always like to do a for example at uh, db bistro which was for 12 years at the marina yeah. Bay and and uh TV Bistro, we were famous for our seafood, uh, seafood platters and seafood preparation. So, of course, there'll be uh, always an emphasis on seafood. People love seafood here in Sagalabia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then there will be also um, on traditional charcuterie. So, we do a wonderful meat pie. We always have a meat pie of sort or a terrine or a pate that uh, represent that. But then there will be crudo. Right now, we have an amashi crudo. Uh, we have also, um, I lived in Denmark and I always love smoked salmon and we have some balik salmon that we do a wonderful play on cucumbers and balik salmons and, um, and um, caraway, creme fraiche. And all, but we also have some foie gras uh, mm-hmm. with uh, endive and, um, and uh, kumquat uh, preparation. Uh, we have a wonderful salad of seafood and sort of Mediterranean flavor, Provencal uh, seasoning and flavor. So that's very nice. And uh, then, uh, you know, always uh, a focus on seafood, but also on fish uh, and uh, shellfish as well. Um, with our meat, we have uh, some Dover sole, we have some sea bass, so the sea bass. We are uh, Chef Remy, who live here, uh, and mm. is the executive chef. Remy is uh, in love with the uh, pepper crab, uh, uh, black pepper crab. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we made an interpretation of the black sea bass with the pepper crab. It was oh, delicious. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, you had some. Yeah, I had some last night. And nice. then we have a little bit of the uh, clay pot rice. So that was uh, clay beautiful. Pot clay pot rice. rice. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we have also a pastilla of lobster uh, that is wonderful with a lot of fragrance of spice and saffron and um, and cumin and, and cinnamon. It's uh, it's wonderful. Sounds very exciting. And Maison mm-hmm. Boulot is is so uh, cozy. There's two levels now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a choice. At least you can come twice a week, and you can have uh, dinner downstairs <laughs> in the dining room yeah. or. Dinner upstairs at the terrace. Overlooking the bay, the beautiful Voila. Marina it's Bay. Absolutely. Beautiful <laughs> promenade views, yeah. Uh, okay, we want to talk about, like, when it comes to chefs, we're always so interested, like, how you started, where you started. Mm. So why don't we find out more on the Big Show TV? Uh, if you want to find out a little bit more also about what went on last night, we have a short video that we might be playing here or later. Shalini will decide. Uh, but we'll find out a little bit more about uh, Chef Daniel Baloud's history. All right, here's 17 with God of Music on KISS. 92. Lovely. So it's always good to start at the beginning. <coughs> and where was your beginning? I mean, did you always grow up wanting to be a chef? And if you didn't, then what did you want to be? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, are we on? Yes. Yes, yeah. we're on. Yeah, we're yeah, on yeah, all yeah, the way. On. Yep, we're on. No, I, um, I had the privilege to grow up on the farm. You know, every chef wants to be a farmer today. <laughs> every chef wants to connect yes. with the, back to the farm. Farm to table, uh, right? <laughs> absolutely. I was deep in. <laughs> and um, beside that, growing up on a farm, I've never been to a fancy restaurant. But I had a wonderful neighbors that was going to all the best restaurants uh, all the time uh, in Lyon, my hometown. 
And when I decided to be a, a young chef, I could have go to school and study cooking while also staying at school. Or I wanted to do an apprenticeship, and I did an apprenticeship at 14. Wow. And uh, so I went to work every day, basically at 14. And then I went to school twice a week during the afternoon. But uh, I started in a two-star restaurant in Lyon and two-star Michelin. And uh, from there, I never looked back. I always wanted to work to some of the best chefs in France. And I worked in many of the three-star restaurants as well. And... Uh, then the rest, you know, is history. It's history. Yeah. And, uh, it's we, but, but I when? just travel, and I started to travel, and yeah. I always dreamed to come to America, and I went to America, and I stayed there. Land of and opportunity. Yeah. 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 Right. And, and, and when did you think, okay, I'm going to open my, my first restaurant here in New York and call it Daniel? Yes. That was so, in the 90s. Yes, early 90s, because I arrived in New York uh, early 80s or early mid and uh, I needed to really build a name for myself and have the possibility of being able to raise money to open my first restaurant. So my first restaurant, I needed about $3 million and uh, I wanted to make sure I was trying to uh, you know, raise that money myself personally. And then I uh, found someone that wanted to say, that told me, you know, I don't want to be one of your 10 partners, I'd rather hmm. be the only one. Oh, nice, uh, that's so always good. That went very fast, the check was in yeah. the mail right away. <laughs> And uh, from there, I just started to open Danielle in 93. So Danielle is 31 years old now. Mm. How yeah. as young as me. It's your, it's <laughs> as your, young as it's you. your pride and joy. Yeah. <laughs> Very much is the flagship. Is There is mm. only one in the company. But then we have uh, Danielle has a lot of siblings. So <laughs> 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 there is uh, Café Boulou and Boulou Sud and uh, Maison Boulou and... Barboulou and Le Pavillon, Le Gratin. Any more in the pipeline? Uh, there's more. There's, uh, of course, Maison Boulou is very exciting here in Singapore. I think something different than DBB throw. Uh, and I think we have done it. We have been there, so it's great to do something new. And, um, and otherwise, yeah, there is a new restaurant in uh, Los Angeles, Café Boulou Los Angeles. Uh, that will be um, opening in the spring, uh, late spring. Hmm. Okay, and, exciting. And have some. You know, you you've got so many. You started with Daniel. You've got so many different restaurants. You've got cafes. You've got how much of what you serve is influenced by <coughs> because many chefs are family, mother, grandmother. How how big is that influence with you? On, and the dishes you serve? Maybe not on the uh, the menu at Danielle keep evolving mm. and you know it's it's a it's a teamwork as well but there's always some DNA but for example I just opened a restaurant in New York called Le Gratin mm. Le Gratin it's a real French bistro sounds like potatoes uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds like potatoes yeah. but in my home every Sunday on the table my mother will make a beautiful roast. It could be roast mm. guinea hen, chicken, duck, uh, you know, veal roast, beef mm. roast. But there will always be a gratin, a gratin of potatoes, gratin mm -hmm. of Swiss chard, gratin of cardoon, gratin of macaroni, gratin of mm. zucchini, gratin of anything. Yum. Every Sunday, there'll be a beautiful gratin dish. And so I had this bistro I wanted to open, beautiful bistro in New York. Very charming, and I wanted to give it a name that was really meaningful to me. Mm. And I named it after my mother's the dish. Gratin. <laughs> Sunday's gratin. So it's all <laughs> gratin. It's all gratin. No, 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 it's no, no, no. It's, okay. a, it's a real bistro with a full menu right. of a bistro, but there is the gratin of my mother on the menu. Oh, nice. beautiful. That Chef, sounds lovely. Can I, it's can a potato I, gratin with uh, layers of cream and cheese. Cheese, oh, of course. Yeah, the more cheese, absolutely. the more potatoes, the better. <laughs> May I get you a coffee this morning? Yes. How, how do you, you like nice. your coffee? Yeah, how yeah. would you like your coffee? I'm going to get someone to, to get you a Black a and coffee. straight. Black, black uh, and straight. Straight, black and tall. Yeah, <laughs> one black of those. and tall. Black. So, black, no sugar. 
No sugar, no milk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No milk, no sugar. It's no uh, have you tried um, local coffee before? Singaporean no, coffee. Tell me. Ooh. Yeah, it's Ooh. it's really it's really aromatic. It's got a different taste. Yes. Uh-huh. They, yeah. Are you sure it's gonna wake me up? Uh, I it's, oh, oh, 100%. it's very strong. Uh, especially black. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it wakes up most people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. is it, it like the Vietnamese coffee? It's uh, better. Oh yeah? yeah, I feel it's better. I think, I think, so yeah, you have condensed milk inside? No, no, uh, no. no. So we can have it black as well. I always have it black. But I mean, okay. they, if you drink it with milk, you can have the condensed and the evaporated uh, yeah. milk in yeah. it. Uh-huh. So that adds okay. the sweetener. Okay. Yeah. But it's too sweet. Something I feel intense. when you put like condensed that. milk in it, it's very uh-huh. sweet. But yeah, you don't. No, no, absolutely. You don't take your coffee with uh, sugar. No. Okay. No. Yeah. no. That's how you he looks that. so young. Look at him. Correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Daniel, you were mentioning just now uh, all your restaurants and all. And this comes under your management group. I do believe it's called Dynex Group. Yes. Isn't it? Tell yes. us a little bit more about that. Well, we formed Dynex maybe 25 years ago. <laughs> when I started after Daniel, I, um, I opened a pastry store, a uh, bistro, and then we started to have some consulting. And then I moved Daniel to the location where I was the executive chef in New York, which was at Le Cirque and at the Mayfair. Le Cirque had moved and the opportunity came to come back to where I was the executive chef and made a name for myself there in New York and, and, and moved Daniel into a grand space uh, mm. in the building. And uh, so that's when I created Café Boulou. And at that point, we needed to form um, a management group already with someone in charge of supervising um, that. And so that's when we started that about 25 years ago. And Dynex today is about 22 restaurants. It's about 1,000 people working in New York plus, and then maybe another 1,000 outside of New York. I see. Okay. Okay. Let's go back on, on the radio once again. traffic. If you're on the roads, look out on the PIE towards Tuas after Pai Leba Road. Avoid lane 3 of vehicles broken down. Also on the ECP towards the city after the PIE Tuas exit, another vehicle breakdown. Watch out wherever you are today and stay safe. Good morning and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is Chef Daniel Bullard. And he, of course, uh, has just opened Maison Bullard at uh, Marina Bay Sands. Congratulations once again, Daniel. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I look forward to welcome the Sing- Singapore uh, to Maison Bullard, of course. <laughs> They're all looking forward to it, I can guarantee you that. And you know what? We've given him a bit of Singapore as well. He was just about to indulge in a curry puff that we bought this morning. Yes. <laughs> he's taking the tissue that. out. He, he's I, looking at the pastry and he knows it's flaky. Know. So he's got the tissue on the on the, on the the table. I love the smell. It, it is, yeah. So it's a it's a typical uh, local snack that we have. We oh. eat it every every hour of the day. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like a turnover. It's like it's a turnover. Like a turnover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's savory. It's, it's a curry puff. So it's got like potatoes and I think a little bit of chicken mm. in it. And here, you see, oh, yeah. I love it's how like he's inspecting it. Chocolate really it over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah. That's chicken I'm and with my coffee. curry inside. You have it yeah. with your coffee, <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, now, yeah. Um, chef, how did you feel when you first got your Michelin stars? Ooh. Well, <laughs> you know, it took, it, it took quite a while for, Mich- uh, for Michelin to come to New York. Um to the time I've been in New York, maybe they have been there half of the time that I've been in New York. And uh, it was wonderful. I mean, you know, this is something we, of course, we strive to work for a customer and a community and a team. And uh, we do a lot of things because we love what we do. And, and of course, we want to make sure that we have the recognition and the reward for it. And one has to know where you are the most happy with things. And I think at Daniel, we are very happy with our two star because we are certainly the proudest two star in New York, maybe the finest, and certainly teasing the third. Oh, no, nice. Yes. <laughs> the next time we're in New York, we have to go visit your restaurant. For Absolutely. Sure. 100%. 100%, yeah. <laughs> so um, this is a question and that then I. We have a restaurant called Le Pavillon. 
in and New York that we got a star last uh, two years ago. Oh, oh congratulations. congratulations. So congratulations. That, uh, they're doing very, very well. And then we have also a Japanese restaurant called Joji. Joji, I was about to ask, yeah. And Joji got his star this year. Oh, wow, congratulations. And so there's more to come. <laughs> and and Le Pavillon. But we're so proud of everyone's, you know, achievement. Not only my achievement, but the team. The team. The team. Mm-hmm. And Le Pavillon and Joji are kind of in the same building. Same, are they? Building, same building. Absolutely. Okay. And then it's Joji Box. What's Joji Box? Joji Box is just like you have your puff Like your here, bento box? Like your little curry puff, but you can have your lunch at the at your desk. Oh, right. Uh, Joji okay. Box. Yeah, it's a takeout. Takeout. Um, mm. uh, and it's fantastic. We have company that order like 50, 70 bucks just to mm. keep it, their staff happy. It's one way to bring back people to work. Yeah. At the office mm. is to offer them sushi once a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't come back, no sushi. <laughs> okay, we are speaking to Chef Daniel Bullet right here on the show. Let's continue to talk to him a little bit more on The Big Show TV. It's 8.16. KISS 92 Time Check brought to you by Putian. Usher in the Year of the Dragon with Putian's Prosperity Yusheng, topped with prosperous abalone and topped with Putian's masterfully concocted Yusheng sauce. Putian, mastering authentic Fujian cuisine with quality ingredients. Up next at 10, Charmaine Foy at the Kiss Cafe. This. Neil Hum did at 11 Madison Park and go all vegan or all vegetarian with any of your restaurants because <laughs> I'm vegetarian so I'm always interested to find out what's available for me at a restaurant like yours so in case you didn't know I would like to remind you but when I opened Cafe Boulou 26, yeah. 26 years ago uh, 26, 27 mm. my menu was uh, and it's still today it is composed of four small menu okay. one is La Tradition which is all the inspiration of my classic background mm. uh, as a French chef and, and, and honoring classical cooking. And then there's La Saison, who is the spontaneous seasonal, seasonal. dishes mm. that we do. Mm. Then there's Le Potager, which is the vegetarian, vegetarian. menu. Okay. And uh, Le Voyage, which is the older cuisine, but French. So right now Le Voyage is Thailand. So Le Potager, oh, wow. 27 years ago, was certainly maybe a little bit more early than Daniel. More um, advanced than anybody else. But it's not vegan. It's yeah, not yeah, vegan. It's, it's yeah. just uh, vegetarian. Uh, but at least we always have a great offering of vegetarian dishes yeah. on our menu. Yeah. And my cooking, I will say, it is what it is. But I use a lot of vegetables in my cooking. Mm. I can never conceive a dish mm. without, without a composition of vegetable. To me, vegetable first, um, and and anything that grains and all that. Mm. It's it's part of a sort of this more complex addition to something, and 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 you really have to find uh, a way to be able to make the vegetable interesting and delicious and, mm, mm. and in harmony with the preparation uh, that you make and uh, so I think uh, my uh, you will never be disappointed to come to me and ask for vegetarian dishes okay <laughs> there will always good. be one waiting for you then I can look forward to Maison Boulot and, and find <laughs> out like what, what I can eat off the menu in terms of vegetarian food absolutely yeah, and okay. we're gonna even make more okay that. okay I keep on telling her all the time she's missing out. (laughs) No, it's not (laughs) like I was born vegetarian. She used to be vegan. (laughs) Until I met these guys. (laughs) Even harder. Interestingly enough, uh, 11 Madison Mm. is located on 24th Street and Madison Avenue. Yeah. Mm. And um, on 24th Street and Park Avenue at the corner, on the opposite uh, block uh, side, I'm opening a steakhouse. So... (laughs) Yeah. You, right across you the can road. you can have your vegetable <laughs> with Daniel and, and then you can eat go your and meat. have your steak with Daniel. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so I you, love it. You need two Daniel in one night. And two Daniels in one night. And speaking of steak, I had your filet mignon yesterday. Ah. It was so good. Oh, sweet. Okay, speaking it was of melt in your mouth. Oh. Mm. Speaking of yesterday, let's let's uh, see what okay. happened yesterday at the opening. We were filming you. Yeah. Daniel. <laughs> oh really? Oh. Is there a sound? Lovely. Cool. Look at Daniel's house. Beautiful. <laughs> this is it. This is a party. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for being here. Chef Daniel, 
I thank you very much. I think this is going to be an amazing and fantastic partnership. Continuing for the next decade. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Maison Bleu is uh, something that I'm very close to my heart. You know, let's cook seriously, but let's not take ourselves too seriously and make guests feel very comfortable with the idea of having, um, you know, a, a real, a true hospitality like we had at DB Bistro for 12 years. And, uh, you know, while I miss, I will miss DB Bistro, I'm not going to miss anything because this is a fantastic adventure with Maison Boulou here. And it's adding also something uh, extra to the collection of fine restaurants here already. So my friend Tatsuya, my friend Borgang, and all that. Sometimes I felt, you know, with my bistro, I, uh, it, it was very nice. And I think many people love TV Bistro for coming back often. And so we want Maison Boulou to stay in that vein also of approachable, affordable, and yet still driven by the kitchen. We call it Maison because it feels like a little townhouse here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we have this magnificent view over the bay, Oster, but we also have the intimacy of a restaurant down here. And I think the combination of both is wonderful. Uh, we closed TV two weeks ago. We all moved here and we ramp up. And uh, now we're opening tomorrow. So <laughs> thank you to the team. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. Voila, that's so it. Nice. Beautiful Sweet. space. Look at that. Well done. It's it gorgeous. It's such a beautiful It's place. such a nice space. I think it's going to be a fun place to rendezvous for at sure. the MBS. Yeah, for sure. I love I love the outdoor space. I love sitting sitting on the mm -hmm. on the promenade at Marina Bay cuz mm. there's so much people watching, dog oh, watching, you know. Much, yeah. And it's it's all a day great long. spot. All day long, exactly. Absolutely. It's dangerous. Very nice. <laughs> Once again, congratulations on that beautiful space. Very nice. Yes, yes. No, I'm very Daniel. excited and uh the lady who designed the restaurant, uh, Joyce, Joyce Wang mm. from Hong Kong, uh, she also designed Mod 32. And, oh, Mod uh, 32, right, yeah, okay. And that was, mm. and it was uh, a great, uh, great thing to mm. work together. Mm. Yeah, mm. great fun. I mean, how do, you, how do you come up with sort of like concepts for restaurants? You know, like what, what's the first thing that inspires you or where do you get your inspiration from? Well, um, I think we it's collaborative work, and we discuss that as a team first. What will be the best fit, and also after the you know from Maison Boulou, for example, we wanted the restaurant to be um, to be contemporary but comfortable, and uh, to be current but classic at mm -hmm. the same time. So there's always that yin yang of things that you know you don't want to go too far trying to do something too exclusive or too uh um too modern or, or too yeah just a good so, balance yeah good balance of comfort and pleasure and 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 feel mm. that uh i think will make the place a place you want to come back right i i'm, I'm always very sensitive at you know, I don't want to make a restaurant just to check the box and uh, for people to check the box and move on. Mm. <laughs> I think, you know, we want them to be Return to customers. Return, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. And speaking of a good balance, I think uh, Chef Daniel is a, is a human being uh, with a good balance as well because he's a chef, he's a celebrity chef. True. Mm. You know, you're comfortable off as well as uh, on camera, you've done TV. I remember mm -hmm. there's something called After Hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometime that back. How, how much did you enjoy doing that? That's Singapore the first time. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Because uh, some 15 years ago, I did uh, One Night in Singapore. Oh, nice. Which I think people can still Google <laughs> and find uh, One Night in Singapore with Daniel Boulou. And I think it was the Asian Food Network. Ah. So I did a big dinner at the Fullerton uh, in celebration of the Asian Food Network that was putting up all my show with after hours. So now I, I've never been to Singapore and I arrive here and people are stopping me in the street and I'm like, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity. <laughs> yeah, they already saw me on TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after so hours. And, and not just after hours, no, you've been that. on late night shows yeah. as well, Daniel. I think you've been on uh, Stephen Colbert's uh, late oh, night yeah. show. And uh, many other. <laughs> yeah. And but the big show as well. And yeah. you've made a, a, a cameo on uh, Billions as well. 
Yes. Billions, billions. yes, yeah, one of my favorites. I even did uh, a cameo with uh, Michelle Yao, which is a dear friend. Michelle Yao, yeah. On a movie. Michelle okay, Yeo, yeah. Uh, that we shot in uh, Thailand, actually. Oh, I see. Was that a recent one? Oh, ten. Uh, the name oh. of the movie was The Final Recipe, and it was a. Uh, I don't think it was a Chinese production because the, the, the director was Korean. But oh, right, uh, okay. the movie was happening in Shanghai. And it's a wonderful food story movie with. Generation, oh. the grandfather, the father, and the son. And the final and recipe. The final recipe, which mm. I don't know where that movie is, but it's a great movie, I think. And uh, if you live in this part of the world, uh, I think it's a fun movie to watch. Okay, we'll look that up. Might be on Netflix. So I am at the beginning of it because uh, I wrote a book called Letter to a Young Chef, which is really my sit down with a young chef and my life story to him, and also my advice to his future life story right. uh, or future life in the, in the kitchen. Okay. And, um, and letter to a young chef, uh, I said that I will test a young chef by asking him, by giving him three eggs and making me an omelette. Oh. And see how good oh. is. That's, <laughs> that's okay. a true test. Let's, 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 let's talk about this again. Yeah, We're yeah, going to yeah. go on the radio right yeah. now. Let's talk about this. Traffic. If you're on the roads, look out on the BKE towards the PIE before Woodlands Avenue 3's entrance. A vehicle's broken down. Also on the ECP heading into the city after the PIE to us exit another stalled vehicle. Wherever you are today, stay safe. Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is Chef Daniel Bullard. And uh, Maison Bullard is now open at Marina Bay Sands. Today it actually officially opens and we congratulate you once again, Daniel. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And I really advise that don't try to make a reservation for this weekend. <laughs> you can always try. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, absolutely. But next week. Uh, and we're not going to open lunch right away. Okay. So I think lunch will come in the next week or two mm. uh, coming. I mean, oh. you're opening up at a perfect time. It's Chinese New Year weekend. <laughs> no, you know, no. Just in time for the, for the long uh, weekend. I mean, uh, the dragon came just for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. You know, when locals come up to you and you know they're celebrating Chinese New Year, you need to say this. Huada. 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 Yes. yes, you say Huada. it so perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Very well. you, shake that. you know, happy Chinese New Year. Huada. And, and, like, <laughs> and, and uh, tonight or uh, tomorrow, mm. tomorrow at uh, Maison Boulou, we'll do the uh, Lohe. Oh, yeah. nice. Oh, yeah. with okay. The, with the team, we do a big nice. one, and we all share. Beautiful, beautiful. So, you that's know, perfect for all the good wishes that's great Usher that's great. in the year of the dragon <laughs> you know earlier on the Big Show TV we were talking about a movie that you were involved in with Michelle Yeoh called The Final Recipe about 10 years ago and you feature at the beginning of the movie uh, with a young with sort of like being the mentor of a young chef yes. uh, and you give him three eggs and tell him to make an omelette is that kind of well, like the true test of a chef when it comes to eggs? Absolutely. And in the movie, it was not one young chef. It was 60 of them. Oh, 60. <laughs> oh, wow. And okay. Because that was the beginning of a big competition uh, among young kids, like, you know, like Top Chef right, or something. Yeah. Mm. And there was a big prize. And the young kid that is in the movie needed to do this competition to help his grandfather's restaurant, to save his grandfather's re restaurant by uh, winning the big prize maybe because he grew up with his grandfather watching him cooking and all that. And he decided to do that as a student. And um, of course, watch the movie to see the rest. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but, we'll, we'll look it up. Uh, we'll what I want to say is then, yes, um, so I'm going to the row and looking at every cook's making omelets because the hardest test for a young chef is to cook eggs. And uh, so, of course, I'm looking at the omelette and some of them are like elephant skin and some of them are like baby skins. And like, you know, we have a name for every omelette we see. <laughs> wow. And, and is that the, like, like, we found out that there are a hundred ways to cook eggs. And that's why the chef's a hat has a thousand ways. Th okay, thousand ways. What is the hardest kind of egg to perfect? Is it the poached egg? Is it the omelette? Is it a scramble? scramble you know, scramble, yeah. what, what, what is the hardest egg to cook? Hardest it's, type of egg? It's not the hardest. I mean, eggs need attention. Egg need, e eggs need, you know, to control temperature and timing. And, and love. And love. <laughs> and, uh, but I think uh, for me, scrambled eggs is, uh, there's many school for scrambled eggs. 
but the French like them a little runny. Runny, yes. yes. A little buttery, bit soft. I love them a little uh, bit runny. Yeah. Runny, buttery, and, uh, and you know, the method is do you want a double boiler or do you want to do it directly in a thicker pot at a slow heat? I like the idea of a double boiler because mm. this way you can just gently cook your eggs yeah, okay. and, and then finish it with a little bit of cold butter inside. Oh, and I like, for oh. example, with caviar yeah. that uh, I love my eggs with caviar and um, I, not that I eat caviar every day, but um, <laughs> <laughs> especially New Year's Eve, <laughs> New Year's Day, New Year's Day, I always start the year with caviar and scrambled oh, eggs. Oh, wow. And I, I put some chive inside and I always put a little bit of lemon zest Mm. Uh, so that the lemon give with the caviar give a little bit of whiff of. Oh of my goodness! I think you like the the, the soft <laughs> boiled eggs at Toast Box. Oh, I think so. Downstairs, you yeah. might oh, yeah. just, That's you might just. with yeah. some kaya toast. It's a very local oh, local oh, dish. Very so local soft dish. Boiled yes. eggs. They always yeah, get yeah. the eggs perfect. Perfect. Cool, you cool. got to have like a little that. bit of yeah. uh, white pepper and some of that dark soy sauce on it as well. And what Glenn okay. does is he takes <laughs> toast with. A coconut jam, mm-hmm. so and then dips it into the egg. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So a little uh-huh. bit of sweet and salty. Sweet and salty. Curry puff. Please I'm have your go curry puff. Okay, okay, go, go for it. <laughs> hey, you know, we've been congratulating uh, Daniel on uh, Maison Bulut. Mm. I need to congratulate uh, Daniel on his accent as well. The French accent is the sexiest accent in the world world right now. Well, you're pretty good too. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Let's continue to talk to Chef Daniel Bullitt on The Big Show TV. Tate McRae is next. She's all I want to be on KISS 92. This is delicious. It, it's good, right? That's a good Absolutely. It's a, bit a curry spicy. puff, yeah. That's it's got a little bit of spice in it. With the flakes are really mm, good. Yeah. The flakes are superb. Yeah. Do you think it's butter or other fat? Yeah, you tell me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're the chef. Because that, just that, to us, that to us is comfort food. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is something it you're a little be, bit... It could be made with pork fat. You said there is pork inside. No, no, chicken. no, no chicken. 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 Oh. I don't so think maybe, that's pork. No, but chicken. maybe a lot, uh, chicken fat. Maybe, maybe inside a little bit the puff. Mm. I like how you're breaking it down. Mm. Yeah. Delicious. I'm glad really? you like it. Glad They've improved. I They've like, improved. I like the curry that curry very Cur- well. I mean, it's, it's just nice. Like it's it's and it's not and too and spicy. No, yeah. No, no. And, the, and the puff is perfect. So I found the final recipe. You can actually watch it on YouTube. Oh. So it's a, it's a South Korean movie. Yes. From 2013. Uh, and uh, done uh, by one of the greatest um, movie producers. Oh, South Korean Thai drama film. Director. Yeah. Oh. Directed by Gina Kim and written by exactly. George Huang. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, our Chin Han was in it as well. Oh yeah, that's right. Chin Han. Chin Han is a Singaporean actor. Yeah, yeah but he's that, in he the was US. the uh, main actor inside. Or? Oh, he. Uh, it's oh. it just mentioned Michelle okay. Yeo and Chin yeah. Han, so I'm not sure. Because yeah. it's a Henry Lau and Chin Han, I guess. You know. yep. Oh, the chef husband is Chin Han. Oh, that's so a, she is a Michelle. He's Michelle Yeo's husband in, in the show. Yeah. Oh, the, the story is very twisted, but uh, twisted. <laughs> uh, it is very interesting. Okay. Um, Mm-hmm. Well, not you can twisted. watch it on YouTube. It's not twisted, but it's 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 pretty well done. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Uh, you you got me at twisted there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm I want to watch this movie now. <laughs> <laughs> so you you've rated you've rated our curry puff. How do you rate the coffee? Um, I love the coffee. I was expecting um, more in it, like uh, spice or something. Oh, but, uh, right. no, it's good. It's good. It, it tastes like coffee. I think they fry the coffee beans uh, in some sort of butter, butter. or something. Chicory. Mm. Is it what they? Oh, I think oh, right. there's okay. some chicory yeah, yeah. in there. So you get right? the taste of chicory a little bit, right? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so it's I, yeah. Uh, that's maybe the mm. taste. Yeah. And there's, there's a, a bit of butter, roastiness, toastiness mm. to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a real art. The How would you compare butter, this? I've never put butter in my coffee, but that's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's what are you talking about? French put butter in everything. In, yeah, in its true. day, in its day here, laborers would do that for energy. They would take a they would take a black coffee and put a slab of butter. In it, oh, really, and let it melt in the hot coffee, yeah, and then yeah. drink the coffee. Mm. Ooh, for they call it they call it bulletproof coffee bulletproof now. Bulletproof coffee. Oh, my God. Yeah. Isn't that with coconut or is it with butter? Yeah, that's that's butter. It's butter, that's co- yeah. yeah, yeah. That yeah. will that will coat your stomach, so the oh, coffee yeah. will not. Uh, yeah, yeah. but well, we're glad you wow, like it. Interesting. So speaking of local food, I mean, you've been to Singapore a couple of times. What's your what's your something that you look forward to eating here? Well. Of course, there is always the chili Chick- crab. The chili crab. But mm. there is the uh, chicken rice. Um, the um, to me, um, the chicken, the the poached chicken mm. with the rice and the 
uh, the sort of the scallion ginger mm. garlic uh, oil and, mm. uh, and the, the brothy a little bit uh, yeah. with it. Mm. I mean, to me, I love poached chicken. Some mm. people don't understand uh, when you boil a chicken. But <laughs> <laughs> for me, I love that. And, yeah. uh, and, and some of them are roasted a little bit. Yes. They, they broil them after. And yeah. uh, I think they're mostly for the chicken rice, they mostly poach the chicken. Yes. Well, it's either, chicken. it's either you want white chicken or black chicken. That's yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. Ah, well, no, yeah. roast chicken. But I usually black go chicken. for the white. Yeah. <laughs> roast chicken or poached it's chicken. It's been a while yeah. since but, I've... But there are also a number of chicken rice uh, uh you know restaurants here in Singapore yeah. and not all these chicken rice uh, uh, restaurants are, are the equal, same yeah. you know in terms mm. of of the deliciousness so who takes you to uh, to have chicken rice usually when you come here the local to the the local either sometimes is people in my team mm. or friends yeah. uh, that uh, just want to make me tour the town yeah. uh, you need to go and try all the different here, chicken rice yeah. stalls because everyone yeah. has a favorite yeah. chicken oh, yeah. rice stall uh-huh. yeah and also, I, I'm sure that they don't depend on the same chicken, everyone. So they mm. certainly have their own source of chicken that make the dish. Yeah, mm. because it's an argument. Is it the chicken that makes the chicken rice or is it the rice that makes the chicken rice? Yeah. Or, you know? or the, or the, the broth the or, the, yeah, or the chili. So everybody has their favorite rice or Absolutely. chicken or mm. chili. Mm. Um, Chef, you know where is the best chicken rice or not? Of course, everybody is going to kill me when you're going to take me to Far East Plaza. Yeah, I don't mind. For lunch? Chatterbox. Chatterbox. Oh my oh, goodness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's right. He's, He's right. right. But, yeah. the, but the one at, uh, the one at Far the East home. Plaza is also pretty good pretty on good. the fifth floor. Yeah. yeah. The old school one. But it's not so cozy. That's but why I don't like <laughs> I, I Glenn, mean, Glenn only likes the fancy. Correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it must be like Maison Boulot. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Five star. Five star. Only five star. Nice and comfortable. So, so that to us is the national Singapore dish. Dish. What do you think the national French dish is? The uh, na- just the one. If it could be just one dish from France, what would it be to uh, describe? I think it's uh, very much like your chicken rice. It's called poulet po. Poulet. Mm. Poulet po, which is basically a boiled chicken. And then we make a rice pilaf with it Ooh. that we uh, cook with the broth of the chicken. But no chili in France. <laughs> 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 of no course, chi- yeah. No course. chili without boiled chicken. Yeah. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> but, but, but it's interesting that you say that because, we put like, herbs and you, we put you eat it with rice. Yes. Like as a tourist, I've never it. had that in no. France. I've had your escargot. Oh, I've but had poulet. Po is a home dish. It's a home dish, right? Uh, uh. You, re- you find it in bistro as okay. well. But I think you know the poulopo goes back to Henry the Fourth, mm. so we are in the thirteen. Uh, 14th century or 15th, uh, mm. I have to go back to my history. <laughs> and uh, Henry IV declared in France that every family should have a boiled chicken on the table on Sunday. Mm. And, uh, you know, as, as a symbol of not only gathering together, but eating a good meal. And that was the poulet po. And so uh, <laughs> since then, uh, so since uh, the 1400. Uh, the French have been eating chicken rice Pulo po. For every Sunday. Chicken rice, well, there you a go. tradition, a rich tradition. <laughs> Interesting. Go. And I'm sure yeah. every family has their own recipe, right? And every family has oh, their best yes. one, and, right? And, and depends on the herbs you put in, and uh, depends on the vegetable and the time of the year, you know. And, and but that's not something you eat during the summer as much as winter in the fall and winter. Mm. Yeah. Ah, okay. And is that a dish that we can find in, in New York at your uh, bistro? Uh, yes. Uh, right now we do pot au feu. At Le Gratin, there is the classic du mois, mm. and we have a wonderful dish that uh, right now it's a pot au feu, so it's of s- seven meat or six meat, boil boil meat with the vegetables, okay. and then we have all the condiment with it and all that. It's right. Beautiful. Wow. Nice. It's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Are you going to be here over the Chinese New Year weekend? Like uh, this weekend? Uh, or are you leaving soon? Uh, yes, but uh, on the way back to New York, I'm stopping in Lyon. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, when do you leave Singapore? Hours. When do you leave? So Singapore? I'm leaving Saturday. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. you could still miss the big festivity. Uh, but may- the tan. maybe someone should get you something called pun chai, pun which chai. is a which yes. is a, a Chinese New Year dish. You're talking about like m- many ingredients in it. Then you need to ask the oh. genus. Oh, that's yeah. true. The, actually, the I, I'm, genus, I'm sure yeah. they will. Yeah. You know. Okay. <laughs> they in got French, it sorted. In French, when there's many ingredients in a dish, it's a poo-poo platter. Poo-poo platter. I want a poo-poo platter. Poo-boo or poo-poo? Poo-poo. 
Pupu. Pupu. Pupu platter. Wow, okay. <laughs> no, the pupu platter is when you get everything on it. Everything mixed in. The whole menu in one plate. <laughs> nice. A couple of members of my family make pupu platters. Oh, no, Ebony, that's terrible. <laughs> okay, no, but we, it's we, a good thing, you know. We're going to have... We're going to have one more talk set, right, Shalini? Just one more talk set. Okay, I've got something later when we go on air to, to ask Daniel. So I'll save that. I'll save okay. that uh, you know, for later. Um, as, a, as a chef, you're always cooking. You're always making sure that everybody is fed. But what? who is your go-to chef? Like, if who is someone you, you like to go to if you want comfort food? Comfort food? Yeah. Or, or, or you where know, though? just yet. Yeah, right? I don't know, anywhere. Where, where you live, New York. Absolutely. Um, uh, in New York, comfort food. Um, I like uh, the restaurant Benoit in New York. Mm. It's Alain Ducasse yep. Bistro. Mm. I love it. Uh, the chef is Italian. It's okay. I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> he used to have the sexiest accent, but no more. It's, it's the, the French, French accent now. <laughs> uh, but uh, the food is wonderful. Okay. And uh, I think it's all full. It's French. It's classic. Uh, but, you know, I... I I admire very creative chef, mm. but I have even more admiration for a chef that really know how to do true classic. And um, for example, um, I have a lot of chefs in my restaurants, and uh, I really like when uh, my uh, one of my chef the cuisine we and I'm really trying to install that in them is that you know the dish got to have a. a a story, a connection with something that gave you the direction mm. of the dish. So you can be very creative with the dish, but where is the foundation? Where is the base? Where is the roots? Mm. Where is the story? And what? And it don't matter if it's about French cuisine or other. Mm. Uh, when uh, you know you cook something Italian or you cook something French or American or Asian, for me, it's the source of um, the source of. The, the passion cuisine, the, and the, the, no, mm. but the, also the classic, mm, the, mm. the real classic application mm. has to be the foundation of a dish, mm. okay. because that's a that's a way to keep your direction. Uh, yeah, mm. not to uh, lose uh, focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. This, but then what's in it? Oh, there's Beautiful. some Madeleine. Some Madeleine. Madeleine. No, I mean, oh, Madeleine. Some Madeleine. Yeah. Yeah. And they're coated in chocolate. So Beautiful. Coated in chocolate. Oh, wait, wait, coated in chocolate. <laughs> He had me at chocolate. Mm. The minute you said chocolate, the mm. hands all went. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, traffic. White chocolate and what's the smells raspberry? Smells like lemon. This one smells yeah. like lemon. 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 lemon yeah. yeah. Some lemon to it. Mm. Absolutely. I love metal. Oh, I love one. Oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Give him one. Oh, oh yummy. Mm. Mm. I'll just keep this here. KISS 92 Traffic. Okay, on the BKE towards the PIE after the Woodlands checkpoint, a vehicle has broken down. Also on the ECP towards the city after the PIE to us exit, another vehicle breakdown. You can WhatsApp us 88550920 if you spot anything else. Good morning and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. I hope you've been enjoying watching us eat and talk. <laughs> uh, our guest for this morning is Michelin star chef Daniel Bullard, uh, who... Um, is in town because of the opening of Maison Bullard. And uh, today is the official opening, all right? So if you're there this evening, uh, man, you're so lucky to get a table. Yeah, for sure. And if you're <laughs> along the bay this weekend, you pardon my mouth because I've got a Madeline in it. A beautiful <laughs> Madeline. Mm. If you're along the bay at Marina Bay Sands and you don't have a table at Maison Bullard this weekend, just walk by. It's right in front of the Apple Store on the bay and you'll see what a beautiful atmosphere it is because it's very... It's very French Riviera comfort mm. very much. sofa seats on the outside. Not so much like high bar stools. Um, very homely looking. And then if you actually go in from the promenade and walk down these sort of spiral stairs, it almost feels like you're walking into someone's living room downstairs. So have a look and then make a reservation for when they have availability. Yeah. But obviously this weekend is going to be full. And of very course, welcoming we'll as well. We always keep tables for walk-ins. So okay, of course yeah. if there's okay. too many walk-ins, there's no more tables. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> I'm walking <laughs> In. That's I'm how walking it, but, in. But as I said, don't feel intimidated because sometimes people feel intimidated. But uh, by a big name, especially but Daniel and his staff, they are always warm mm. and welcoming. So oh, very much, yes. absolutely. I'm so proud of the team, and they. Um, it's it's really an extension of my big family. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Uh, yeah. You know, from New York, we talk to each other often, 
Uh, we always are very much in touch, and I always enjoy coming to see them here. Right. Speaking of New York, Daniel, I, I love the fact that you give back as well. Just very quickly before mm. we let you go, tell us a little bit about City Meals on Wheels, which oh. you've been uh, yes. a part of since 2013. Very much, but even uh, I'm, I've been part of since the late 80s uh, City Meal as a contributor to support uh, fundraising. But uh, for the last 25 years, uh, because we're on our 26th gala at Daniel, so when I go back to New York in three weeks, uh, early March, the first uh, the Sunday, March 10, we have a gala at Daniel called Sunday Supper. And because it's a Sunday fundraising, we want people to come in black tie and blue jean. <laughs> because we don't want them to, so it's kind of dressed down, it. dressed up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You put a nice jacket, but you can keep your jeans. Yeah. And you come to a gala that you're going to pay three to 5000 a seat. And we have about 180 people. I bring every year some of the finest chefs in the world. This year is going to be Virgilio Martinez, number one in the world by mm. the 50 best in Peru and Lima. Mm. Yeah. Coming with also the Swiss star chef, William Bradley from California, Addison. And also some chefs from Portugal, and and uh, we are a group uh, uh, of chefs like and um, and we are doing this wonderful dinner, and we hope to break a million in the fundraising oh, wow. for one little dinner, uh, and that we have been doing at, at Danielle for 26 years. I, I am the co-president of City Milan Wheel, so I'm very involved with it. And City Milan Wheel basically deliver 20 plus thousand meals every day to elderly New Yorker. So yeah. you don't qualify yet for it because he went button and he <laughs> went button and to me. <laughs> but one day, you know, when you'll be home and you don't want oh, to go to no. a to a nursing home and you want to stay home, we'll bring you a warm meal. Oh wow, that's <laughs> and amazing. That's, you know, a lot of volunteers, a lot of a lot of love and and um, people you know, they, they are still fine enough. And, and what's interesting, out of the 20 plus thousand people that we have registered in the five boroughs of New York, uh, more than 100 are centenarian. So, oh, wow. Oh, imagine. I mean, it's, it's, <gasps> so it keeps you well and alive. But they're uh, not on the streets. They're in, no, they're they're in, in their homes. Okay, they're, they're in their, their homes. homes. Okay. They're in their home. Wow. wow. Yeah, yeah. They're not on the street, neither they are in a, a nursing, nursing home. home. Right, okay. Because nursing home, they will feed them there. Yeah, yeah. yeah but those sure. people cannot go to the supermarket. They sometimes have no they more family. Leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but they still like their life. And I think it's a lifeline also because every day they see that person bringing the meal. Yeah. And There's someone to talk know, to and yeah, someone and, to and, interact. And also they can check on the person. Mm. Uh, so it's something wonderful. And I think to me, you know, there's many other charity as you put for children, for health, for uh, many things. Mm. But uh, this is also one that I focus because it's connected with food. And, mm. and, and you uh, get to feed people that need it. People that need it and people that sort of were here before me in New York. Mm. And made the city what it is. So yeah, right. amazing! Yeah. Well yeah, done. Well done. Bless you, Chef. Well very good, Daniel Bullitt. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much, uh, Chef, for being with us today. Uh, While well, we've taken up quite a lot of your time. <laughs> Thank you so hour. much. Yeah, oh, it's close hour, to an hour. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Uh, we welcome you on I'm the show so anytime you you're on the show. Okay, you. every time you're in Singapore. Come, Come on. on. Yes. Right. When, when you're in New York, take Kiss 92 on the road. And yeah. Bring it to New York. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. sounds great. I may be in New York this year, so I'll Excellent. let you know. I'll drop I'm it to Daniel. You. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Chef Daniel Bullard. Merci. Thank you, Singapore. Thank you, everyone. Wake up feeling good. The big show.